Test 1 review. There are 30 questions in this assignment. I'm going to do non-repetitive questions. Uh, the first question, determine whether the given source has the potential to create a bias in a statistical study. The American Automobiles Association AAA is a not-for-profit federation of motor clubs and provides automotive and travel services. AAA conducts a survey of its member. Remember, look at here. AAA conducts a survey of its member. So it's already biased. About their use of public transportation versus private automobiles. Choose the correct answer. We are trying to find out the source of uh, potential biasness. So let's look at, the, look at these options. There does not appear to be potential. No, there is. There does appear to be potential to create a bias. There is an incentive to make the result statistically insignificant. There does appear to be potential to create a bias. There is an incentive to produce results that are in line with the preferring private automobile. So AAA is the private and it's doing a survey uh, of its members. So this is the right option we can find here. Determine whether the sampling method described below appears to be sound or is flawed. In a survey of 770 subjects, the following question was posted on a newspaper website. So whenever you ask question on a website, that's already, uh, you know, it's a voluntary based survey. Is your view, are, are nuclear plants safe? In your view, are nuclear plants safe? This is the question posted uh, on a website, the survey subjects were internet users who choose to respond to the question posted on the elect uh, electronic edition of the newspaper. It is flawed for sure. So you have three different options for the flawed. It is flawed because it is a voluntary response sample. This is voluntary. Whenever you ask question on a website, that's the voluntary. Next question. The software package um, StatCrunch coordinated a future optimism survey that included this question. Do you expect to be better off than your parents were over their lifetime? StatCrunch user could choose to complete the survey and obtain results. Among 1019 StatCrunch user, 587 said that they expected to be better off than their parents. Uh, so identify what is wrong so what is wrong here so you post the uh do you, okay the this is the question do you expect to be better off than your parents where over their lifetime and then out of 1019 587 said they expected to be better off uh, the order of the question, the sample is a voluntary response sample. The respondent may not be representative of large population. Uh, this is uh, this is the because the StatCrunch asks question, where is that? The software package the StatCrunch coordinated a future optimism survey that included this question. StatCrunch user. So this is only for the StatCrunch user. The sample is a voluntary response sample. Um, Yeah, so this is this one is the right option here. The sample is a volunteer response sample, and uh, the respondent may not be the you know the representative for the large population. Next one, determine whether the underlying number is a statistics or parameter. <clears throat> a sample. Whenever you talk about the sample, that is a statistics. So statistics. So there are two different options because the value is a numerical measurement describe a characteristic of a sample. Uh, statistics because the value is a numerical measurement describe a characteristic of a population. So here is the a sample of senior is selected and it is found that 35% own a vehicle. So this one is the right option because 35% means it's a measurement. It's a it's a numerical value. So it's from the sample and then it's a numerical value. Determine whether the data described below are qualitative or quantitative. The SU size such as eight or ten and a half of test subject. Whenever you talk about the suicides, you can compare the, it's a numerical 
and you can uh, you know collect the data by measuring uh, measuring the you know the shoe size so it's a uh, quantitative the data are quantitative because uh, they consist of counts or measurement so this is the right option state whether the data described below are discrete or continuous it's a number of hotels in cities so it's supposed to be uh, discrete because continuous means uh, it's supposed to be like number of hotels could be 100 could be 200 could be 300 could be you know five something like that uh, so it's a discrete so there are two different options the data are discrete because the data can only take one specific value so b is the right option state whether the data is described below are discrete or continuous one more time the height of the different refrigerator offered by manufacturers the height uh, could be anything between so it's it's supposed to be continuous the data are continuous because the data can only uh, data can so this is the right option the data are continuous because the data can take on any values in an interval so that's the continuous question number eight which of the following is associated with a parameter? Parameter means it's for uh, population. Whenever you talk about the population, the data, take about take the data for the population, that's a parameter. Data that were obtained from an entire population, that's the parameter. Which of the following would be classified as categorical data? categorical data so number of suitcase no amount of rainfall no hair color that's a categorical data okay a frequency table of grades has five classes a b c d and f the frequency is given uh, use a percentage what are the relative frequencies so to find the relative frequency if i uh, you know let me So to compute the relative frequency, here is the data. You can do it by using simple calculator. Uh, add all this frequency and divide each of this frequency by the total number of frequency. And that will help you to find the relative frequency. To change it into the percentage, you have to multiply that by 100. You can also use a start crunch here. So I go here, data, compute, expression, there is no relative frequency formula in the start crown, so we need to build that. So how do you build it? Uh, relative frequency is actually the frequency, which is uh, given in this column variable 1. Add this column, and then divide this by sum of this whole column. And then eventually, if you want, you know, percentage, then you have to multiply this uh, fraction by 100 so when you hit ok and then do the compute it's going to calculate uh, the relative frequency look at here this column this one is the relative frequency so for the first one it's a two decimal place we are looking for 12.82 <clears throat> 12 um, what is that So second one is 28.21, 28.21, if you round it to the two decimal place. Third one is 43.59, <clears throat> fourth one is 10.26, and then fifth one is 5.13. If you round it to the two decimal place, these are the answer you can get. Excellent. Okay, identify the lower class limits in 100 cells per this unit. Uh, so this is a, you know, frequency table you have given. The lower class limit means this lower number. As you can see here, 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So 0, I just have to type this. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and then 600. That's the lower class limit. 
and then upper class limit means these upper numbers 99 199, 299, 299, 499, okay, identify the class width, you can always find the class width by finding the difference between two uh, lower class limit, like you can see the first lower class limit is 0 and then second one is 100, what is the difference, difference is 100. So the difference between the class limit or the uh, lower class limit or the upper class limit, as you can see, it's always 100. So that is actually class width. Now, identify the class midpoints. Midpoint means uh, you need to find the class midpoint. How do you find it? So as you can see here, this is the class 0 to 99. What is the midpoint of that? So the midpoint of that is you can find you can find the midpoint by adding the, the for example for the first one it's a middle of this 0 and 99 so add 0 plus 99 and divide it by 2 that will give you let me just use 99 plus 0 which I don't have to do that but I'm just showing you how you can find it so first class midpoint is 49.5 and for finding the rest of the class midpoint just add this class width to the previous uh, midpoint so second one would be 149.5 uh, because we're just keep adding 100 here 249.5 449.5 and 649.5 so these are the midpoints identify identify the class boundaries class boundaries is you know uh, we're trying to find uh, the boundary for this for example to understand this thing I'm going to uh, show you uh, here we know the first class is from 0 to 99 and second class is start at 100 to 199 so you see here is the gapping we want to find out if you have some number from here where do you keep those number the first interval or the second interval for that we need to find the boundary and for that the boundary would be the middle number so what is the middle number of 99 and 100 it's a 99 plus 100 divided by 2 which is 199 divided by 2 which is 999.5 right so that is the you know that is the midpoint uh, between this 99 and 100 but that is not the first midpoint you you have to keep finding the midpoint here uh, and then keep going like that but you also have to find if you, you also have to go to the left side as well so what is the mid um, class boundary on the left side it is the class boundary on the right side uh, of this first class so to find the class boundary to the left side you just have to go 100 unit 100 because it's a class width class width to the left for finding the you know uh, the first uh, the class boundary and which would be negative 0 0.5 and then you know for the for the next here you just have to keep adding the class width 100 so I'm going to start with the second one which is 99.5 and if I have to go to the left side just subtract 100 from that which is negative 0.5 and if I have to go to the right side just add 100 to each of these previous uh, class boundaries okay 399.5 499.5 and and then eventually 699.5 so these are the class boundaries identify the number of individual included in the summary so total number of frequency gives you the number of um, 
individual included in this in the in the summary so how do you find it go to the data compute expression build we are looking for sum 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 of this frequency column and when we do that when we try to compute that that's going to be added somewhere here which is 160 so that is 160 okay so next question you have given data here and there are 45 different data so this data there are 45 this this we have 45 data here which is the commute times to work in minutes for worker of age 16 or older in Chicago construct a frequency distribution use a class width of 15 minutes and begin with a lower class limit of zero minutes so remember if you are starting the lower class limit zero and then class width is 15 next lower class limit would be 15 the next one would be 30 because you keep adding the class width to get the next lower class limit and for upper class limit so 0 to that number goes here so 0 to 14 15 to 29 30 to uh, 44 and uh, 45 to 59 60 to 74 and 75 to um what is that you just have to add 15 to this number so that is 89 good so that's the class limit now you we need to find out the frequency okay so we can open this in start crunch we can find out how many data are there from 0 to 14 by going here to the stat go to the table go to the frequency select the column and then just select this frequency function and it's going to compute different frequency for different data like four minute is repeated one time 10 minute is repeated one time so by adding all this number up to less than uh, 15 which is 4 10 and 12 you can see there are 1 1 and 2 data so here the frequency would be total 4 because if you look at the data if you look at the data itself if I sort the data like in ascending you can see that from 1 2 3 4 4 of these data they are less than 14 and then from 15 to 29 I have 7, 6 plus 2, which is uh, 13, 15 data, right? So you can also check that manually here from 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So similarly, I can now find out from 30 to 44, which is 11 plus 2, which is 13, okay? And then so um so what is that 45 to 59 which is 8 what is that that's 8 and then from 60 to 74 that's 4 and from 80 above that's 1 check your answer excellent <clears throat> Do the data amounts appear to have a normal distribution? So normal distribution distribution means it starts low and it goes, it grows up to some point and after that it starts going down. Okay, when you try to plot the graph of normal value, it should look like this. So if you plot the graph of here, like 4 is here, let's say 4 next data is 15 and then 13 and then 8 and then 4 and then 1 so if you try to plot the graph this is what you are going to find so the answer is let's look at the answer here uh, 
yes because the frequency starts low proceed to one or two high frequency then decrease to low frequency and the distribution is approximately symmetric that's not the case this distribution it looks like more towards the right side so the answer is no because while the distribution is um, because while the frequency starts low proceed to one or two high frequency then decrease to low frequency the distribution is not symmetric so this is the right option because of this it's not the normal distribution okay examining the data and identify anything appearing appearing to be unique select all that apply so if you look at the data what do you see what do you see uh, the unique characteristic look at the options here the data are presented as quantitative but are actually categorical no that's not right <clears throat> the most of the data values are rounded to the nearest five or 10 minutes is that the case let's look at the data so either it's a 10 1 2 3 4 5 20 25 so most of the data values is rounded to the you know to the nearest five except this four 10 yeah so the answer is most of the data values are rounded to the nearest five or ten minutes and maybe estimate of the actual commit times this it looks right Okay, the following data shows that is of recent award-winning male actors at the time when they won their award. Make a frequency table for data using uh, beans of 2029, 20, 3039, and so on. So here is the data. Open in stat crunch. And then go to this table. Frequency. Frequency. compute select this column frequency compute okay so when you select look at here the data is you know there are 34 data so instead of <coughs> selecting frequency for each of them they are just giving the data into different um, different um, uh, interval from 20 to 30 there are two frequency 30 to 40 10 and then so on so on so if you go here and try to uh, sort the data from 20 to 29 1 2 there are two data so I can write down two here you just have to careful uh, because this table is from 20 to 30 and then 30 to 40 it means the value 30 should goes to one of the, one of this interval not both okay you just have to be careful about that other than that for example let's count this 40 where does it go does it go to um, you know third one or the fourth one let's count 30 to 40 so 30 to 40 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so that's looks right so now you don't have to worry because they are including 40 to the next next interval so just copy that uh, 10 11 sometime when we do problem using the start crunch we just have to make sure that uh, the start crunch is doing the way we want uh, it to do okay so that looks right next question construct the cumulative frequency distribution for the given data so click it here go to the stat crunch one more time go to the table stat and then table and then frequency choose this one where is that choose the frequency and there is a cumulative frequency option available and let's just try to compute so from 40 to 49 is this the right data okay this is not the right okay I'm going to copy it in a start crunch yes 20 to 29 and now I'm going to find the you know cumulative frequency so frequency cumulative frequency 
so from 20 to 29 that's so accumulative frequency means you have to keep adding from construct accumulative frequency less than 30 26 less than uh, 40 you have to add 26 and 37 both so that's what we're supposed to do i am not so sure why this okay go to the go to the table frequency and select both of them and then find the cumulative frequency now it looks right what is this from 20 to 29 1 from 30 to 39 2 no 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 that's not right that's not right so it's not calculating the start crunch is not calculating the way we want what you have to do is just add number like so 26 is the first one and then next one would be 37 plus 26 so do it manually uh, 37 plus 26 so that is uh, you can do it manually I'm going to do that using a calculator simple calculator here 37 plus 26 that goes to the 63 here in next column it's a 63 plus 14 which is uh, 77 plus 3 is 80 plus 8 is 86 plus 2 is 88 and then plus 1 is 89 so these are the value we are going to put here 26 what is that so it's a uh, 26 Put it here okay good next one is 63 next one is 77 next one is 80 next one is 86 next one is 88 next one is 89 that's the cumulative frequency okay relative frequency among the fatal plane crashes that occurred during the past 70 years, 467 were due to pilot error, 70 were due to the other human error, and 158 were due to the weather, 693 were due to the mechanical problem, 561 were due to the sabotage. Here is the data. I'm going to open it in the start crunch. Different category, different frequency. I'm going to go here and then try to use relative frequency frequency I'm going to try to find the relative frequency from that column and now I can see that the relative frequency is um, what is that okay it for 70 the relative frequency okay that's not we supposed to find the relative frequency the relative frequency is relative frequency let me just okay no that's not right the relative frequency is just add all this number which is some of the frequency so we're going to calculate that using the calculator here go to the data go to the compute calculate the expression how do you find the relative frequency it's uh, we need to build a new function because the inbuilt function here in the start crunch it's not working how do you do that it's actually the frequency the frequency whatever frequency we're taking here divide that by sum of type sum of all the frequency we have given so add this column and then you can just hit OK and then just put compute so whatever number you get this is your relative frequency but if you want to find out this into percentage you have to multiply this by 100 so um, I had to do that uh, at the beginning this one times 100 this one times 100 you get you know the percentage so this is the percentage for the relative frequency. 
round to the one decimal place so this is 23 point it's actually 24 if you round it to the one decimal place okay go to the next one which is uh, other human which is 3.6 go to the next one which is 8.1 go to the next one which is 35.6 and the last one is 28 28 point seventy no point eight Nice work. What is the most serious threat to aviation safety? As you can see here, according to this, the most serious threat is mechanical problems. So mechanical problem um, are the most serious threat. Fill in the blank. What is a class width? Class width is found by subtracting the lower limit of one class from the upper limit of the class same class no subtracting a lower limit from the next conjugative lower class limit yes this is how we find the class width this is the histogram we have given um, now we need to find out uh, the histogram represents um, how many team members so you need to find out the frequency so you can see that the height represents the frequency the first one is one two two so you just have to add keep adding all these heights one plus two plus two five six four ten and eleven so total eleven the height of the histogram represents the frequency now the data we have given here this is the data this is the commute time and frequency it's given here now we need to plot the histogram for this so as you can see here from 0 to 14 it's 5 and from 15 to 29 it's 15 um, and then from 30 to 44 it's a 12 let me go here and then try to see if there is a way to plot it using using a uh, star crunch where is that is there any data graph graph histogram okay variable compute okay from 0 to 10 we need 0 to 10 or we need 0 to 14 okay we need to this is not the right one okay this is not the right one we we need from 0 to 15 so don't worry about that just try to compare this value here so the last one is 1 so this looks right 15 12 8 4 1 so just click it here is this 4 yes so this looks right sorry not print done check your answer oh that's not correct so which one is the right one let me do what did i miss um okay look at the table one more time it's a uh, 5 is this 5 yeah 15 is this 15 and then 12 and then 8 and then okay I'm missing something here let me count 5 15 10 11 12 9 8 5 4 this is one from 0 to 10 oh it's not 0 to 10 sorry sorry <laughs> so this is not the right interval I choose the right graph but you know the if you look at the interval here from 0 to 10 10 to 20 but in our actual data it's 0 to 14 so go here and find out 0 to 15 so five similar graph they are very similar look at here a and d but D is the right answer because of this interval. My bad. The histogram has a longer left tail, not the left, to the right tail, has a longer right tail. So the distribution of the data is skewed to the right. The histogram does not appear to be the graph of the data from population of the normal distribution. Remember, to have a normal distribution, it's supposed to be the bell set. It's supposed to be like this. 
but this one looks like more like this which is right skewed okay this is the very very similar type of question histogram question you need to find out which one is the right option so I'm going to skip this one uh, histogram question okay this is a scatter plot uh, here is the data we need to find out the scatter plot there is an easy way to find the scatter plot just go here take uh, take the data and uh, there is a scatter plot okay so here we need to find we need to this is the data we have given and we need to you know plot stem plot you need to stem plot for this data so when we open this data in in um, start crunch this is what we're going to see go to the graph choose stem and leaf choose the column and then hit compute it's going to give you this stem plot three six so three six so there are two different options with the three six b and c go to the next one 404 so this one is this one is the right option okay identify the two values that are close closest to the middle when the data are sorted in order from lowest to highest so when we short it when we short the data from lowest to highest so uh, we need to find out um closest to the middle so which one is the middle one so how many data are there there are um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty data so twenty the middle is ten and an eleven so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven so it's a sixty one and sixty three so sixty one and sixty three i can find out that information just by looking these numbers okay okay so next question find mean median and mode and mid range click here go to the stat crunch and then uh, go to the stat summary stat column choose the column which is var1 for us and choose the function from here we would like to find out the mean and then for the next one which is median go to the median and select using the control key on your key keyboard so median and now we need a mode mode for the mid range we don't have the mid range here so we need to calculate that uh, manually so the mean is if you um, this is the mean if you round it to the one decimal place it's a 43.8 43.8 is the mean so median is 41 and then there is no mode so there is no more to find mid range you go here you sort the data so it's a lowest to highest and to find the mid range it's a 2 plus 93 divided by 2 because mid range means higher to lower divide by 2 so highest plus lowest divide by 2 so that's 47.5 that's the mid range okay so now after finding this information this is the most important question what do the result tell us remember this data represents uh, the Jersey number of 11 different players so whenever you are dealing with this cat this type of data the jersey number this uh, measure of center does not represent anything because this is categorical data okay uh, so since uh, where is that the jersey numbers are nominal data and they do not measure or count anything so that means so the resulting statistics are meaningless here again find the mean and uh, median to do this problem exactly do the same thing like we did before use the start crunch and answer the question uh, you'll be fine go to the next problem this is question number 23 here you need to find out the weighted mean 
a student's course grade is based on one midterm that counts as 15 percent so first of all let's uh let's assume that x represents the data w represents the weight of that data there are different type of data here uh, there are different type of assignments here so the midterm midterm which is 15 percent i can write down that percentage in decimal form 0.15 and then uh, the class project project p it's a 25 percent and then um, homework homework h it's a 30 percent so i'm just writing this in decimal form 0 0.30 and then final exam which is 30 percent final is also 30 percent so as you can see here 30 plus 30 60 70 80 90 and 100 so that's the weight and then a student get uh, the score for different assignment is 67 and then after that 96 for the project and uh, homework is 77 and then final exam is 78 this is how you find the weighted mean by multiplying the weight with the different score 67 times 0.15 so i'm going to use a calculator here 67 times 0.15 which is uh, 10.05 10.05 and then uh, plus 96 times 0.25 so that's 24 and uh, plus uh 77 times 0.30 so that's 23.1 and uh plus it's a 78 go back here one more time 78 okay 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 i don't need zero here it's not zero okay so i have to go back how do i go back Okay, it's 78 times 0.3, so it's a 57.15. Is that right? No. 78 times 0.3, 30% of that is 23.4. We have to add this and find out this, which is sum of this column. So. It's a 23.4 plus 23.1 plus, I'm just adding this column, okay? 24 plus 10.05. So that's 80.55 for finding the weighted mean. Users have to divide this by the total weight, which is if you add this column of the weight, that would be one. So if you divide this 80.55 by 1, it would be 80.55. So go back here, it says round it to the one decimal place, or do not round it, so 80.55. So that's the answer. That's the overall score. And then grade based on this score is B. Okay. Next question, find out, uh, this is the data for 11 players, jersey number, and we would like to find out the range. What is range? Variance and standard deviation for that. Go to the stat, go to the summary stat, go to the columns, select this column, and select the function you are looking for. We are looking for range. So what is the range? Find out the range here. Okay, range, standard deviation is the next, so control the standard deviation, and then uh, the variance is the next one, control variance. So these are the three things we're trying to find. Range is 77. Okay. And then um, standard deviation is 26.18, round to the one decimal place, it's a 26.2. 26.2. Twenty-six point two, 
and then finally um, variance is 685.8 685.8 excellent since this is a you know this data re, uh, collects the jersey number uh, the jersey number are nominal data so um, it's just a replacement for main so there is uh, names so the resulting statistics are meaningless for the jersey number is a categorical data so statistics is meaningless for the jersey number a group of adult males has foot lengths with a mean of 27.32 centimeter and in standard deviation of 1.47 centimeter use the range rule of thumb for identifying significant values to identify the limits separating values that are significantly low or significantly high so significantly low values um anything less than um i'm going to show you the notes for this okay so this is the picture you have to uh remember keep in mind this is uh, your center or mean of your uh, data and uh, within two standard deviation to the left and to the right this value of the data they are not uh, you know significant if you get anything more than uh, two standard deviation from the center or less than two standard deviation from the center then those values are significant values and that is what we would we want to find out here significant low value means center a mean minus two times the standard deviation so in this case the mean is 27.32 minus two times standard deviation is 1.47 1.47 so that is your 24.38 um, so any value 24.38 and lower that's a significant low value based on our uh, information here anything less than uh, mean minus two times the standard deviation these values are significantly uh, low values significantly high values you do the same thing but this time you take the mean plus two times uh, standard deviation uh, so the mean is 27 let's say 27.32 no 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 27.32 minus 2 times 1 not minus sorry plus 27.32 plus okay 27.32 plus 2 times 1.47 so that's 30.26 30.26 okay select the correct choice below and fill in the, the so what answer we're trying to find is the adult male foot length 30.5 centimeter significantly low or high this value is greater than 30.26, so that's significantly high. The adult male foot length 30.5 centimeter is significantly high because it's greater than this 30.26 boundary. Okay, question number 26, use G-score. G-score to compare the given values. Based on sample data, newborn males have weight with a mean of 3,218.1 gram and a standard deviation of 637.1 gram. Newborn females have weights with a mean with a mean of 3,088.6 gram and a standard deviation of 751.7 gram. Who has the weight that is more extreme relative to the group from which they came a male who weigh 60 gra 1600 gram or female who weigh 1600 gram so to answer this question first of all we have to understand 
uh, how to calculate the g-score there is a formula for the g-score this is the formula we can use for the sample so uh, in this problem so g-score is you know x minus x bar divided by you know the standard deviation that's the g-score okay so in this problem we need to find the g-score for um, both of both male and female for the for the male you can see i'm going to calculate the g-score by plugging the value of x 1600 minus the mean divide by the standard deviation i'm going to use a calculator here um, so it's a 1600 minus the mean which is 3218.1 gram divide by 637.1 that's the g score for mel and if i round it to the two decimal places it would be negative 2.54 i guess go back here it's a negative 2.54 Similarly, uh, if we try to find the G-score for female, X is 1600 and then we need to just put the value of uh, mean and then standard deviation from here, which is um, 1600 minus 3,088.6. It's given here uh, and then divide that by the standard deviation, which is 751.7. So the standard deviation for the uh, the G score for the female is negative 1.98, negative 1.98. Sorry, negative 1.98. That's for the female. Uh, since the G score for the male is this and uh, G score for the female is this, and now as you can see here, you know. Uh, this is the picture you have to understand the g-score starts from here anything to the left of negative 2 g-score is significantly low or to the right of uh, positive 2 the g-score is significantly high if you have anything in between negative 2 to positive 2 that is not much of significant g-score so in this case, we found that this is not that much significant. So the male G-score is very significant. So we need to pick male has the weight that is more extreme. Excellent. Next question, uh, use the accompanying radiation label. So here is the data we have given uh, for 50 different cell phones. This is the unit of the radiation watt per kz. And we need to find out um, find the percentile corresponding to 1.01 .01. so to find that thing uh, you need to calculate how many there is a formula for that I'm going to show you the formula for the percentile okay for the percentile of any value can be calculated by using this formula which is number of the values less than that one how many values are less than that num that that value divide by the total number value times 100 that gives you the percentile so in our case we're interested to find the percentile for 1.01 .01, so we need to calculate how many of the values less than 1.01 .01. so first of all let's sort the data in the ascending, ascending order and then let's go here go down here 1.01 .01. this is 1.01 .01. so there are 17 value less than 1.01 .01. so according to this formula it's a 17 divided by 50 times 100 because total number of value it's a you know it's a it's a 50 so 17 divided by 50 times 100 so the percentile for that particular number is uh, as you can see here it's a 34 that's how you can calculate the percentile now this is the value for the 10th percentile there is the table you have given we need to find out uh, if from this table what is the value for the 10th percentile so you can do it differently but you can also use this thing uh, using the start crunch here 
if you go to the stat crunch summary stat column select the column and if you go down here this one it if you put the what percentile you are looking for this calculator is going to help you to compute the that value so 10th percentile we're looking for 10th percentile according to this it's a 0.575 so round two decimal place so it's a 0.575 so 0.58 what per kg so it's easy if you have a stat crunch Okay, question number 29. A successful basketball player has a height of 6 feet 11 inch or 211 centimeter. Based on statistics from a data set, his height converts to the G score of 5.17. How many standard deviation is his height above the mean? So, uh, we know the G score is uh, X minus X bar divided by S. So divide by this standard deviation. So you can see here the G score is 5.17. So G score means it's uh, how many times um, you know the the uh, how many times uh, how many times standard deviation the data is far from the mean. If you rewrite this thing. If I rewrite this G score, then this is G score times standard deviation is X minus X bar, meaning the G score times standard deviation is the difference between the data value from the mean. So since the G score is 5.17, so that means it's a 5.17 standard deviation far from the mean. So 5.17 standard deviation far from the mean. So that is that is the meaning of uh, G score. The last question Researchers measured the data speeds for a particular smartphone career, carrier at 50 airports. The highest speed measure was 76.8 Mbps. The complete list of 50 data speeds has a mean of 15.31 Mbps and a standard deviation of 39.27 Mbps. What is the difference between career's highest, carrier's highest data? speed and then mean so here in this case it's a very easy thing we have given the highest is 76.8 and then mean is 15.31 so that's a difference 61.49 do not round 61.49 that's the difference between the highest and uh, mean the second question is the difference is um, um difference is how many times is standard deviation to find out this thing you have to divide this difference by the standard deviation which is 39.27 because we would like to find out the difference with the standard deviation so according to this it's a 1.57 times the standard deviation the difference is 1.57 standard deviation so that is actually the z-score because we know the formula the z-score is the difference divided by the standard deviation and that's what we did so this is actually the standard deviation uh, the courier's highest data speed is so because the value is 1.57 any value z-score uh, in between negative 2 to positive 2 is not that much significant According to this, uh, this information here, we can say, hey, because it's 1.57, the, uh, the carrier's highest data speed is not significant. Okay.